What if you had a full-on neuroscience laboratory that could fit into a wireless headset and record brain data from almost anywhere in the world? We could finally learn about how the human brain reacts to different stimuli in urban environments, nature, and even outer space. This is definitely the most advanced brain-computer interface device that I've had in the studio so far. Depending on what dot I look at, it will actually use my brainwaves from the back of my head in order to understand where I'm looking on the augmented reality screen. So let's do up, down, right. So it's really responsive. Cognition is still deep in the process of perfecting this technology for its clients with communication difficulties through its recent FDA breakthrough device designation. But they were contacted by so many groups that wanted early access to the platform because of its ability to take neuroscience out of the lab that they decided to release this research grade unit that they're calling the Axon R. Now, if you didn't have to add gel, you really could just throw it right on. Boom, ready to go. Where this device really shines is the quality of the EEG data that feeds into the central brain of the unit called the nucleus. The nucleus transmits high quality EEG data to be able to calculate ERPs and other EEG signals. Now, as you can see, it is an augmented reality visor. They secured a high-end Android phone in front of the visor to display the BCI Studio software. The demonstration that I did at the beginning of this video could be used to control a wheelchair or navigate the internet. But what a lot of research institutions and even the military are asking for is the ability to use this hardware in virtually any environment and monitor the response of the person using it when it comes to different stimuli. You can also feed in other biometrics like eye tracking, EOG, GSR, HRV, and those all feed in wirelessly through the Wi-Fi into the same research software, allowing you to correlate it with the brain data. The package comes with the software development kit and the company's really excited to see what applications people can make with it. Now the Axon R doesn't do eye tracking, but you can combine it with devices that do. This pair of head glasses is called Pupil Labs, and this actually has eye tracking in it. It's got cameras that face your eyes and keep track of where you're looking. It also have cameras that face outward. Now, if you combine the Axon R data with the Pupil Labs data, you would have a ton of information of where people were looking in any physical space, where their gaze was fixated, and even how they were reacting to different stimuli. You would think that eye tracking would give a lot of information for neuromarketing purposes, but just because you gaze at something doesn't mean that it actually holds your attention. With the Axon R, you actually would be able to measure people's attention. There are different ERP signals called P300 and N300 that actually correlate with how you react to a stimuli in the environment. And with AI and machine learning, we can really assimilate all this data in one place and make sense of how people are interacting with their environments. If you add in glasses that track where your eyes are looking and have cameras that monitor the environment, you really get a comprehensive view of what the human brain is doing in environments like this. And you can tell whether I'm reacting to certain situations positively or negatively and design different things around that. How do you design how a military unit moves through the woods? How do you design how to interact with the drone that's in the air as you're walking through the woods? How do you design a fighter pilot cockpit so that the pilot doesn't become overwhelmed? A lot of the measurements that we'd be using are ERPs, cognitive load. These are measurements of how hard the human brain is working in real world environments. Now with the Axon R, I did have to use EEG gel to get the best signal, but it can be used without gel. For example, the University of Waterloo just reported back that their Axon R is performing very well for their research with dry electrodes, even though Cognition generally recommends using gel for clinical research. And it was a challenge to get it set up by myself in the studio to get the best brain connection, but I was able to do it without an assistant. It was funny, once the electrodes were in place and I had good impedance, I didn't want to reset things and take it off, but it was lunchtime and I was really hungry. So I actually sat down with the device and ate my lunch, and then I checked the impedance when I was done and it was completely the same. So it really was a testament that you could wear this thing around and eat food and do all kinds of things with it once it's in place and maintain the connection. This week we were walking around the Vegas Strip, out to the Mojave Desert, and up into the 
Spring Mountains, and we really could have used the headset in any one of those locations as long as we had a cellular connection. The device easily charges in regular outlets and a USB-C cable for the phone. Now this device has been designed with gold standard signal quality and an SDK, so it is going to be outside of the price range for most consumers. But if you're a research organization or business that's interested in making an investment and building something with this incredible hardware software package, you can go to the link below and contact Cognition for pricing options. Now I will have more time with this device in the near future, so my developer Tyler and I are going to use the Cognition SDK to make a custom tech for psych app for this hardware. Should be really fun. And if you want more of a basic video explaining EEG and how AI is totally revolutionizing neuroscience right now, click this link here and I'll see you on the other side.